Hello BookTube. I've got a couple of new books that uh, have just arrived from Amazon. Uh, I had to open them up. Well, there was one I wanted to see immediately, but I didn't know which package it was in, so I had to open them both up. Uh, there were two items that I ordered yesterday. They've come today with the uh, Prime delivery. Uh, one I did not know existed until yesterday when I hit the purchase button. Or a few minutes before that, I should say. Um, the other one, I'd been humming and hawing over buying for about a year now when I first saw it existed. And I finally just bit the bullet and said, I have to get this. Uh, from uh, Mark Richardson at Richardson Reads. Uh, he did his sort of uh, SF anthologies um, video. But he also showed some sort of uh, non... Uh, what do we call it, the uh, sort of history of science fiction books that he has. And this was one of them, Astounding. It's uh, by Alec Navala Lee, and it's uh, Astounding. John W. Campbell, Isaac Asimov, Robert A. Heinlein, L. Ron Hubbard, and the Golden Age of Science Fiction. And the flap here says, Astounding is a landmark account of the extraordinary partnership between four controversial writers, Campbell, Asimov, Heinlein, and Hubbard, who set off a revolution in science fiction and forever, and forever changed our world. This remarkable cultural narrative centers on the figure of John W. Campbell, whom Av Asimov called the most powerful force in science fiction ever. Campbell, who has never been the subject of a biography until now, uh, was both a visionary author, he wrote the story that was later uh, filmed as The Thing, and then goes on. Uh, however, I'm sure there was a biography written of Campbell before. But I just can't, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, so this should be great. Um, it's Dell Street, or Day Street, D-E-Y Street, an imprint of William Morrow. Uh, published 2018. So I didn't know about this until probably the first quarter of last year, so 2019, so I was a bit late with it. Uh, I'm going to have to contact Amazon. This is a new copy, but it's got some quite a bit of damage to the page edges near the spine at the bottom, so uh, because it's being new, I don't accept that. So they'll have to rectify that. Now, the other one was... A total surprise to me. Four of them were released on May 6th. And I've been wanting to reread this writer for a long time. Generally, you, can, uh, you have to get just really ratty paperbacks. And I wasn't prepared to spend that much money on a ratty paperback. And it's none other than Edgar Rice Burroughs. And the Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, estate, I guess it's the estate, um, or the business, Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated, uh, is doing a Edgar Rice Burroughs authorized library of everything he wrote. The four first Tarzan books come out on May uh, the 2nd, or 6th, sorry. Or at least that's the date uh, in the uh, UK here. Now, this is number two, The Return of Tarzan. And the reason for that is Amazon didn't have in stock uh, Volume 1, uh, the Tarzan. And I could have got it from uh, Book Depository, but it was like three pounds more than the price that Amazon wants, and it'll take weeks to get here because I'm still waiting for something that I ordered about three weeks ago from uh, the, the depository. So, uh, and I was quite excited about it, still am, and wanted to see this. So I ordered Volume 2. It's not as if um, I'm missing anything that I, I wouldn't have jumped right in reading it. I don't know what their schedule is uh, for... Um, for publishing um, their website um, there is a newsletter to sign up to get information now they do have 
here, Edgar Rice Burroughs Authorized Library. First time ever, the Edgar Rice Burroughs Authorized Library presents the complete literary works of the Master of Adventure in handsome uniform editions, published by the company founded by Burroughs himself in 1923. Each volume of the Authorized Library is packed with extras and rarities not to be found uh, in any other edition. From cover art to frontispieces by legendary artist Joe Jusco, to forewords and afterwards by today's authorities and luminaries, to a treasure trove of bonus materials mined from the com company's extensive archives in Tarzana, California. The Edgar Rice Burroughs Authorized Library will take you on a journey of wonder and imagination you will never forget. Now, they show here uh, is basically the Tarzan series, So, but it's saying all literary works, so it will be Barsoom novels, um, everything, Carson of Venus, you name it, all the individual ones as well, at the Earth's Core series, it should all be here. Now, um, I've had a few minutes to, uh, well, there we go. There's a listing of everything that they're going to do. So, the Pellucidar series, Caspak series, the Mucker series, the Custer series, Patchy series, well, two Western tales, historical tales, other tales, and the list of those. Uh, yeah, it just says, this is by John Ralston uh, Burroughs. I am grateful to see my grandfather's works made available uh, in the Edgar Rice Burroughs Authorized Library, the first ever uniform edition of his entire literary catalog. Now readers everywhere can enjoy these timeless stories of wonder and adventure in a way they have never uh, been presented before. These new editions represent the ultimate ERB experience, featuring magnificent cover art and frontispiece pieces by legendary artist Joe Jusco, forwards and afterwards by noted authors and celebra uh, celebrities, and a bounty of rare and previously unpublished treasures straight from the archives of Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated in Tarzana, California. Whether a reader is new to my grandfather's works or has spent a lifetime enjoying them as I have, the Edgar Rice Burroughs Authorized Library opens a unique window into, uh, into extraordinary worlds of imagination standing as an unparalleled landmark in an already historic legacy. Now, just another look at the cover by Joe Sisko. There's a bit of glue from the packaging that's still on the jacket. And the spines, um, I think they could have done, yeah, now, now I'm going to uh, go sort of describing the book and any criticisms, because there are a few. I think they should have, well, anyway, we'll get to those. Spine, they should have done something a little better for the spine. The back, that's fine. ERB, you know, sit and typing, that's perfectly fine. Um, it is cloth, but it's like, it feels like a wax, it's waxy cloth. As soon as I open it, I had a feeling... Um, we'll take the jacket off. Ah, this looks like a print-on-demand. So, I look in the back, and yep, sure enough, it's a print-on-demand. Which lessens the quality a bit. However, the one thing that, that I do notice is that most print-on-demand hardcovers are cloth-covered. Unlike uh, a lot of, uh, you know, mainstream trade uh, uh, printings today are not cloth covered, they're paper. It is not sewn. It is, um, it is uh, perfect binding. However, it does open up better than most print on demand hard covers that I have, I have seen. So that's okay. The printing is nice. Nice size print. Um, I'm not sure. He talks about a frontispiece. piece. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah, that's a black and white frontispiece. piece. There's a half title page. Um, now that's, uh, an older, I think. But I'm not sure. 
Uh, paper could have been better. Um, it's definitely not, you know, something like this should be on, especially the price too, and I'll get to that in a moment, which they could have done nicely. Um, yeah, the paper could have been better. It could have been acid-free paper, which I don't believe it is. Um, no, I don't see any mention of it, uh, or the symbol for, the infinity symbol for acid-free paper. As I say, uh, there's a forward, but the forward is very short. It's, um... Just over three, just over three page, two, yeah, three pages, and the extra material in the back um, is quite interesting. It's got a lot of uh, facsimile of letters and covers of magazines, but in black and white, and I'm printed on normal paper. See, that should be in color. Those were full color covers. They should be in color. And here's another one. Um, this is the... Uh, later, I remember seeing those paperbacks. So, yeah. And so you got typed letters, uh, handwritten letters, uh, facsimiles of, of them. Um... And yeah, there's more, there's, uh, um, a movie poster. I was trying to see who that actually is playing Tarzan, but I can't tell. And then a picture of, of Burroughs there, but again, poor reproduction photographs. Uh, there is Elmo Lincoln, um, that would have been a nice colored, um, uh, poster for the film the uh, he was sort of the first Tarzan and there he is there that would have looked better in a, a really good uh, photo and a little bit more about Burroughs uh, a little bit about Burroughs Incorporated and more or less a catalog in the back advertising their other wares you can get t-shirts um uh, and then there are some newer books being written um, on uh, John Carter, Tarzan, and they've reprinted as well uh, Fritz Leiber's uh, Tarzan and Philip Jose uh, Farmer's uh, Tarzan books. So those would be kind of neat. However, again, as I say, they are print on demand. Now... I'm a little hesitant to continue because this was 23 pounds. Okay. I think they're $30 US or 25 US. They're either $25 US or $30 US. Which to me, for a print on demand, is pricey. And especially the lack of quality that's gone into it. Uh,. The Everyman Library of Woodhouse is their cloth, yeah, thin boards, but they're sewing. They're on uh, archival paper. They're smaller. They don't have any extra material, but they were ten pounds, uh, eight ninety nine. I think nine ninety nine. Then went up to ten ninety nine uh, near the end, and they did almost a hundred of those. So it can be done, being printed. So this should have been done printed. With cloth binding, with quality pictures, and yeah, and still, because this will sell. They should know that that even even though their profits may be slightly less, it will sell. This will sell into the tens of thousands. Of you can guarantee, especially uh, if they did it good quality. This is going to hurt their sales uh, for the quality. However, I then look at it and go, well, how else am I going to get these? You know, I'm going to spend probably, if I want good quality, let's just uh, uh, stop with uh, Tarzan for a second. The ones I had were the Black Bantam uh, uh, volumes. And I think they're back. Uh, Banta, yeah, um, Ballantine, sorry, Ballantine 
uh, Black Ballantine um, volumes. And those don't last very well because they chi the black chips off a little bit in places, even like even with careful reading, as as I did. So those are expensive to begin with, unless you want ones that are just literally falling apart. You can buy other reprints of them. I've seen some other reprints; they're just atrocious. Go for first editions. Well, you're talking, you know, you need lots of money for this. However, as an aside. If you do have some of the old um, editions, like McClurg uh, publications and so forth, the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate still has original dust jackets that they're selling on their website, which is fantastic. You can buy original dust jackets from the uh, probably the 20s and 30s, 40s, and so forth. Uh, but anyway, getting back, uh, where was I? Uh, yeah, to, to, you know, to get this, it would be... Yes, cheaper to just to read, but I don't know how many. T I don't know how much this will last, but I will have to think about it. And it also depends on how frequent they come out with four volumes. If they come out with four volumes every couple months, then that's going to get very, very pricey for it. Like you know, it's going to be at least a hundred, a hundred and ten pounds um, per to get every four. Um, but it is something I've been waiting for. I've been waiting and hoping that this would happen, uh, well, or a reprint and something a little more. They could put a lot more information in here. They could have, uh, you know, somebody actually talking about, uh, uh, the pub, well, there is, a, there is a little bit, I guess, an afterward with the publication, uh, of it, uh, but there's more they could do. Um, they, you know, they, they, they're, they're flogging their own wares. Okay, fair enough. They're a company. They want to. But for an aficionado, or, well, I don't know if I'm, I'd be called an aficionado, but I would prefer to have basically an extra maybe 100 pages in here of the history of that volume. And film adaptations and all t all types of things like that have a comprehensive little history of uh, of of that volume and when they're done it's Tarzan have at least one solid volume that um, that, that, that gives either other writings uh, re uh, you know letters and stuff like this uh, with regards to the Tarzan series so, you know, but yeah, that's, that's me. Um, but I'm going to have to think about this. Um, and I've got volume two now, so I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I'm leaning probably I will continue. Or at least I will get the first four, I think. Uh, but um, that won't be till sort of next month till I get the other three. But I am, I was initially so happy because I thought well if they're doing an authorized edition they're not going to do it cheaply they shouldn't they can't be doing it. can they can they well something in the back of my head says well um you know this this is a big because after seeing their website thinking well yeah they might and they have it's sad but um they have so in the end I'll, like there's a lot of Tarzans. In the end, I might wind up getting uh, all the Tarzans and Barsoom, and I'm, I'm assuming they'll go in that order. So I forget now. There's 20 or so, um, 20 some Tarzans, and then 11 Barsoom. So. I might end with something like that, just get part of the collection. Unless they do decide to change uh, their, their production, but I doubt it very much. So that's probably what I'll wind up doing. That, that'll sort of be uh, what my plan is to do, to do that. Plus, I want to get the other volumes, um, Fritz Lieber's, uh, even though I know it's going to be uh, print-on-demand as well, Fritz Lieber's and <coughs> Phillips Jose Farmer's. Uh, Tarzan. There's a few others I think they, they're, they're doing as well. But uh, yeah. So anyway, I'll end there. That's 20 minutes. Um, so um, 
I'm I don't know if anybody really knows about this. I, I don't know how much I didn't know about this. I haven't seen anybody else talk about it. So, um, but yeah. So if uh, this is of interest to you and you're happy with something like that, well, the the other thing that I found funny is um, because they've got the printing and it ends with a two. Normally a one uh, denotes, uh, and because this is Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated Publishing. Uh, they end it in a 2 as if it's a second printing, but they don't have a 10, so the 2 might mean, but, but it's, it's immaterial when it's, when it's a, uh, when it's print on demand. It, it doesn't matter whether it's first printing or thou, because each, each volume is a, is a printing. So, like, the very first one that came off would be the first printing, and then the next one that gets printed would be, and so on and so forth, so, um... Yeah. Edgar Rice Burroughs Authorized Library First Four Tarzans Astounding uh, by Alec uh, Navala Lee That's it for today for New Books Booktube and I will see you uh, I'm assuming mail will be back on schedule tomorrow so there, there should be something coming then Take care Booktube